friends, welcome back to my channel. So after you guys really liked my Disney Princess origin stories video, I decided that I would make it into a series. So today I am bringing you guys part two of this series, which is Tim Burton's original stories. So after doing a lot of research, I learned that a lot of Tim Burton's movies aren't actually based off an original story. He more kind of comes up with the ideas. So the only real original story that we have is The Corpse Bride, but I'm also going to be telling you guys about like how his other movies started as well so that this video isn't like a minute long. So let's just get on into it. So we are of course going to start with The Corpse Bride because I know you guys all love that movie just like me. So The Corpse Bride was based off a 17th century Jewish folktale called The Finger. Now I touched on this in my Who is Lord Barkus theory so if you haven't seen that click on the card and go watch that now. But Tim Burton was originally introduced to this idea by Joe Ranth, who was the supervisor of Storyboard on The Nightmare Before Christmas. So this story starts with Once Upon a Time, there was a young man who lived in Russia. And this young man was meant to be wed. So he got his best friend and they began to travel to the village where the bride-to-be was living in. And this was a two-day walk to her village. So after walking for an entire day, the two boys decided to set up camp near a river to sleep at for the night. While they were there, they noticed a stick uh, poking out from the ground that looked a lot like a finger. And the boys were just joking around being stupid. So they thought it would be funny that if the main guy got out his ring for his bride-to-be and put it on the stick that looks like a finger, that it would be hilarious. And they thought it would be even more funny if he not only said his marriage vows to the stick, but also did the traditional Jewish wedding dance in circles around the stick. And when he finished, him and his friend could not stop laughing because they thought it was the funniest thing ever. However, they stopped laughing when the earth around them all began to grumble and shake almost like an earthquake. And the place where the stick had been, you guessed it, opened up to reveal a very bedraggled looking corpse, a living corpse. This corpse had once been a bride, but was now so decayed and so old that she was literally just a skeleton being held together by a few threads of her original wedding dress. So she was quite a sad sight to see. So the two men were obviously in shock. This is not at all what they had expected to happen. So they didn't say anything. The next person to talk was in fact the corpse bride. And she said, you have done the wedding dance and pronounced the vows and put a ring on my finger. We are now husband and wife and I demand my rights as your bride. Well, the two men were horrified and they began to run and they did not stop running until they reached the original bride-to-be's village, which keep in mind was an entire day's trip. They ran an entire day to get away from the corpse bride. However, when they arrived in the village, it was not the original bride-to-be that they went to visit. Instead, they ran straight to the local rabbi. And they asked him, hypothetically, if he had done his marriage vows and the official wedding dance and put a ring on a corpse, would they be bound as husband and wife? And the rabbi was very confused and said that he didn't really know what they were talking about and hadn't really thought about it before. And then the corpse bride herself burst through the doors. And she said, I lay claim to this man as my husband, pointing at the young man. For he has placed his wedding ring on my finger and said the solemn marriage vows. The rabbi did not know what to do and said that he didn't really know if they were officially man and wife and that he would have to get his other rabbi friends or the other local rabbis and they would all need to come together to decide what would happen. So they did. All of the rabbis from the villages nearby came into the town to discuss whether this boy, who went on to be Vincent in The Corpse Bride, was actually married to the corpse bride. In this time, the original bride-to-be showed up wanting to know what all the commotion was about, and when she learned what had happened, she was gutted. She was crying, saying that her life was over and she will never be complete again. Eventually, the rabbis spoke, and they decided that since the young man, aka Vincent, 
had not only said his marriage vows and put the ring on the corpse's finger, but also done the traditional Jewish marriage dance, that he was, in fact, officially married to the corpse bride. But they also decided that the dead have no claim upon the living. Upon hearing this, the corpse bride, who obviously went on to be Emily in the Corpse Bride movie by Tim Burton, collapsed onto the ground into a pile of bones and died. She was in so much shock and so much sadness that she would never be married officially that she collapsed into a pile of bones and threads of an old wedding dress. The original bride-to-be saw this happen and was extremely upset. She leant over the bones of the corpse bride and while crying told her that she will live her life for her. She will get married for her and have children for her. Enough children for the two of them. She then picked up the bones, walked down to the river and buried her in her final resting place. So that is the original Corpse Bride story. It is obviously pretty similar to the Corpse Bride movie, but also not similar at all because it obviously because it doesn't venture into the land of the dead. And we are missing a lot of characters from the movie in the original story. But I find it very interesting. The next original story behind the Tim Burton movie that we are gonna discuss is of course The Nightmare Before Christmas because when you guys will be seeing this, depending on where in the world you are, it is either the 1st of December or the 2nd of December. Either way, it's the month of Christmas. So let's discuss The Nightmare Before Christmas's, uh, Christmas's original story. And a disclaimer before you all attack me in the comments, yes, I am aware that this movie is not directed by Tim Burton and is in fact directed by Henry Selick. However, Tim Burton is the producer of the film and came up with the original idea for the film. Therefore, a lot of people credit The Nightmare Before Christmas as Tim Burton's film, and that is why we're gonna discuss it in this video. So, The Nightmare Before Christmas originally started as a poem written by Tim Burton. Back when he was working at Disney as an animator, Tim Burton began to toy with his own ideas and start to create sketches about what he wanted to do. And with this, he created the poem, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, the original poem is a little too long for me to read in a YouTube video, but I'll definitely link it down below for any of you that are interested. It is, however, pretty similar to the film. And this poem, Tim Burton originally intended to be a 30-minute Christmas special that would air on television. You know, something that everyone would want to watch every single year around Christmas time. However, when he pitched it to the TV stations, none of them were interested. He then tried to pitch it as a novel, but no one was interested either. It was only once he pitched it as a full-length feature film that someone was interested and therefore made it. And Tim Burton says that The Nightmare Before Christmas was released roughly 20 years after he came up with the original idea. So that's all there really is to The Nightmare Before Christmas, but I personally just found it interesting that it was once a poem. Next, we have Frankenweenie, which is another really good movie. All of Tim Burton's movies are good, but this is a good one. But there's no real original story that Frankenweenie is based off, because this is kind of like an original idea by Tim Burton. However, certain aspects of the film, such as many Tim Burton films, are based off his life, such as the dog that we see in Frankenweenie is based based off, as a quote from Tim Burton, a memory that he had with his childhood dog. So I'm not too sure what that means, but that is what the movie is based off of. Lastly, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach are based off of the Roald Dahl books, which, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about Roald Dahl until I saw this. I used to be the biggest Roald Dahl fan growing up. I read them all. So I thought it was pretty cool that these two movies were based off those books. And there you have it. Those are the original stories behind some of Tim Burton's movies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I upload two times a week. Every Wednesday, I am uploading a lifestyle slash DIY video. And every Saturday, I am uploading a theory slash movie video. So it is kind of confusing with the different time zones and stuff. So I'll just explain it here for you all. 
I'm sorry that the frame kept changing throughout <laughs> this video. I was trying to make sure that the sun wasn't on me because then it would go weird on my face with shadows and stuff. So that's what it was. And if you want to see more of my face, I am on Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. My links are down below and on the screen right now. And if you have any video suggestions or anything you want to say, be sure to let me know down in the comments below or on my social medias because I am always near a device. <laughs> And that is all for this week. I will see you guys on Wednesday for another lifestyle slash DIY video. Bye! So today we are back again with another theory video. No, we're not. So the original... Oh, this, this lighting is the best! Yeah! Well, the two men were shooketh. They were shooketh to the max. No. <laughs>